This is a pewter pitcher that I picked up at a garage sale for a dollar. As you can see, the handle has been broken off and also there are some dents in the side. So it's really not worth much other than the pewter. Now here I have cut off the top, cut off some strips which I'm going to melt. For a heat source for melting the pewter, you could use a propane torch, just a traditional propane torch, although this is rather slow. This is a small butane torch. And I've seen these for as little as $10. Now the benefit here is that this torch has a much more pinpointed flame, which will reduce the melting time of the pewter. This is the oxygen acetylene torch, which is going to melt the pewter much quicker than either the propane or the butane. To come back to this traditional propane torch for just a moment, there are some specialty torch heads that will fit on these tanks. And they have a much more pinpointed flame, which will decrease the melting time of the pewter. To melt the pewter, you'll need some type of cast iron ladle. This is a small ladle with a nice long handle on it. This is a cast iron spoon rest, just like an iron skillet. I purchased this one at Amazon.com for about $6. The one problem here is that the handle is too short. So I'm using a pair of vice grips to lengthen the handle. To melt the pewter for this video, I'm using the oxygen acetylene torch because it will go much quicker rather than the propane or the butane. See how easily it's just melting into the ladle. Melting what I've got going in and then keeping what I have in there so that it is molten. I want this to be liquid. So I can just pour it out. In this example, I'm just pouring it out on the welding table. This is free forming. Not trying to get any particular pattern or design. One of the great things about working with this pewter is that if you don't get what you want, you can just throw it back in the ladle and remelt it. With almost no loss of material. It's just amazing to see it pour out in this liquid form. It opens up so many possibilities. This is the outside of the pewter. It was the outside of the pitcher. And it's pretty clean. But if I turn it over, I see some oxidization. Probably oxidization combined with dirt. So when this melts, it's not giving off the real pewter. It's some of the real pewter mixed with the oxidization and the dirt. Now that this is melted, you can begin to see a little bit of difference in the coloring of the pewter right up there on top. That's the impurities coming to the surface. So to get the best pewter out of there, I'm using this stainless steel spoon and just scraping that top off. Now, those impurities that I'm scraping off is called dross. 
Just getting rid of those. Now I'm going to reheat what I've got and then pour it out and I have the real pewter here. The pewter without the impurities. When pouring this out, sometimes there's just a little rough edge where the pour finished. That can be taken care of by just running the torch around, smoothing that out. You can actually use the torch to do some texturing. Of the shapes that I've poured, I particularly like this one. So I'm going to go ahead and finish it using this small anvil, small ball peen hammer, and just peening it so that it will have more interest. Working with this pewter has just opened my eyes to so many possibilities. So instead of just one video on working with pewter, melting it, forming it into some kind of shape, I've got several new videos that I want to work on because as you can see here, I've got some new textures. And also making this triangle or this pyramid shape. So stay tuned because I'm having just too much fun working with pewter to stop now.